Okay, welcome to the fourth, I think it's the fourth video in in this tutorial series on how to make pool or billiards or snooker, snooker light -like game in JavaScript using the P5 library. Okay, this is a stage that we got up to last time, although I've added now the the, le the left and the right edges of our snooker table. And I've refactored, tidied up some of the code, which I'll show you now. I've also tied up this button. I don't know why I did that, it just happened and I feel more secure in myself. So let's see what happens. I was, I was getting a bit rattled and scared by the whole collision detection thing. So it's lovely. We can watch these things. They're quite hypnotic, uh, bobbling around. So now I think, our, I keep loading you up, sorry Google, this one, our diagram, uh, that's a previous video that I'm uploading I think, or the first video, our diagram now doesn't look as good for the first time as as the, the program itself. Okay, so time from now, right, um, okay. Let's show you what I've done. So in the check hit function, which is a method or a function belonging to the edge object in the edge class, what I've done is, first of all, tidied up this little bit of code. I realize that, of course, JavaScript is a dynamic language. This distance, yes, began life as a vector, and now it's going to be a float, a floating uh, number, or a number. Um, and I can do that, and it, and it worked fine. That's the power and the elegance of JavaScript. I like that. Okay, I've also got ERAD here instead of the radius of a top and bottom edge. Let me show you the diagram. So I was measure, measuring for this magnitude, comparing that magnitude to the, the radius of the ball and the radius, so to speak, of the ledge. But radius doesn't really make sense because this radius is different from this radius. And that's a problem if we're trying to hit the left and the right because this, its radius, if we're deriving it, deriving it from its height, is huge. It's huge. And we only want to be deriving it from this little uh, measurement. So what does that look like? So what I've done is say, let ERAD equal zero. And then I've just done something I spoke about in a previous video. I said, if this edge object's width is greater than its height, so that's talking about the, the top ledge and the bottom ledge, then this is similar to what we did before, then find our, our vector between the, the, the ball and the edge, and then ERAD equals the same. So it's a, the, the height divided by two. So it's this distance here. The height of our edge divided by two. But this time, what if the, the height is greater than its width? The radius now is the width divided by two. So in the code, else, so if the width is less than height, so we'll come down here, now ERAD equals the width divided by 2. So that takes care when we call the check hit function. Um, it doesn't matter whether we've got a, a, a top, bottom, left or right, the check hit function will determine what kind of edge you've got, whether its width is big or its height is big. And then I refactored, this is the last little thing to catch you up in, I can now comment, I can delete all of this. I've kind of made this more elegant. So I've just said, we don't need any variables here. If the top edge hit is true, if we hit the top edge, or we hit the bottom edge, then reverse the Y velocity of the ball. And then for the left edge and the right edge, if either of those are true, so this is the OR operator, logical operator, then reverse the X velocity of the ball. And that seems to work perfectly. Okay, and here they are, still working. And right, so what do we need to do now? Let's, we've, we've got two things to do, pockets for making balls disappear, and then maybe the mouse to try and hit balls. Oh, also we've got the balls to hit each other. What should we do first? Let's let's get the balls hitting each other because that's what's fresh in mind. Collision detection. I've got the collision detection button colliding with my neck. Let's do it. Um, 
So this is collision detection that's going to take place in terms of the ball object. So it wants to check itself against another object, against all the other balls. OK. So we've got the constructor. Let's write it here. So check hit. Yeah. Mm, yeah, we'll call it check hit. It kind of replaces the top one, although it's, it's got different functionality, so I should call it check. I'll call this one check collision because it's, that's to do with another ball. Okay, and we want another ball again. So we're now we're do dealing with objects of similar shape, so this should theoretically be simpler. So again, we're going to return. We're going to return. Oh no, I just thought. The collision detection. Oh no, I've got an idea. <laughs> I'm just thinking when a ball hits another ball, again, if it hits the, the left hand side, the Y is going to stay the same. If it hits the top, the Y reverses. So we've got to know when that's kind of happening. OK. So we've got to do some logic. Shall I work that out now? Let's, let's work, see what's going on. So this is kind of the limit case. If there's a difference between, there's a difference between how far it is, this ball, from the X position. So if I mean, if it's there, we do kind of want it to kind of want X and Y to be reversed. But if it's here, we want that one to be reversed. I know. Let's let your Euler take care of it. Let's just say we kind of add their velocities together or something. <laughs> let's see what happens. OK, right. So check collision. So maybe we could do all of that in here. So we're not going to return true or false. We're just going to, if there is a collision, then apply the physics to this object in the ball. Something like that. So um, if this um, position, so again, we need to derive our magnitude -y thing. Not doing great time, about eight minutes left. Let uh, what we're we going to dist equal p five vector uh, sub. So I'm going to take away the ball that we passed in from this position. Now we need the magnitude. So dist equals um, that vector's magnitude. Okay. So we've got the distance between the two balls. Now, if that distance, if that distance is less than the radii added together, and it doesn't matter if we're talking about width or length, because it's a ball, it, they're all equal, is less than um, b's radius plus this radius. So we know they're overlapping. Now, this is the first time I've done this kind of physics. Let's have a look. Um, or have I? I've done things in other videos, but I've not really thought about it at all. Let's say, what if they just swapped their velocities? So if I do this, now I do this. They're kind of, ah. They kind of, <laughs> that makes sense, sorry. If, they, if they're doing this, after moving down. Yeah, it depends where their positions are relative to one another to see what happens. I don't know. Let's just say let um let object three equal this object's velocity vector. And then we're gonna say now we're just gonna swap the, the vectors over. So we're gonna say this um this object uh, what am I doing this 
velocity object. This velocity <laughs> equals the the object that we passed in its velocity, and then um, object B's velocity is going to equal um, object one's velocity, which we've saved in object three, which we've just made. Um, velocity. Okay, so I think I swapped around their velocities. So that'd be interesting just to see what happens. Um, and we could also, in their physics, kind of slow them down. Well, let's just let's just see if what what happens with this. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to check this in the. So I'm back into the main JavaScript file. We're in the draw loop, and we want to go into our for loop. Um, what I'm going to do now, order might have some significance here, because what if a ball is squeezed against the ledge? What if he's yeah there, and then this ball is here, and we get that kind of classic de collision detection bug where they kind of like rattle and stay. We want to give priority to the edge, so it has the final say about which direction this ball is going in. We cut crucially, we don't want it to eat into the edge. We want it to eat into another ball, if anything, so that balls go flying this way. So that means the last direction for x and y of the ball is going to be, before it goes into its physics, is going to be determined by the edge. So we're going to do, we're going to check um, the kind of like intra ball collisions first, and then the edges will overwrite that decision if need be, if a, any ball hits the, the edge. So, balls, or oh, not any ball. Anyway, <laughs> we'll see. So, check hit, and now we want a nested loop. We want to check every other ball. Um, in the array. Have I done that right? Every other ball of J. Um, so we're going to have another loop here. So for let J equal zero uh, while J is less than ball's length and we're going to iterate through them forwards, j, not i, and we do want to finish a loop. Okay, but we don't want to check a ball against itself. What if we're indexing ball 0, and now j equals 0, the ball is going to check itself. So we only want to check that if um, i does not equal j. I think that's now correct. Do that. Let's just, I think I've written everything, let's just see what on earth is going to happen here. Okay, they're already touching and things. So, um, no collision detection at all is happening. Uh, check hit. It's not called check hit. It's called check col. Okay. Oh, what am I doing there? Check call. I did, sorry, I did linger over that. Very strange phenomenon, by the way, when you're kind of like talking, trying to explain, and coding. I don't know, it takes up too much, um, <laughs> too much processing power in my head. <laughs> sorry, we've got no balls at all there. Where's the bug, console? Can you help us? I'm running out of time. Two minutes, I think. Uh, type error. V1 copy is not a function. Oh, something to do with my vectors. That's 65 in the object thing. So this will probably be in the check call. 65. Let dist equal V. 
No, that's right. That is a vector. This position is a vector. Oh, B. Sorry, I haven't got its position. So I was trying to minus an entire object away from a vector. Is that the only problem that we've got? Except for lack of time? <laughs> no, it's not the only problem. Cannot read vel of undefined for check 69 line 69 69 let o3 equal obs velocity oh so i only want so o3 i did get that right the first time isn't an entire object it's only a vector of velocity <clears throat> So I wrote that inelegantly, badly. Oh, there's still a bug. Although we're okay. Cannot read there. Oh, it's the same. Sixty-nine. Sixty-nine. Oh, oh, <laughs> sorry. That's a different. That was a bug I was supposed to get rid of. Uh, so I'm passing in B, which is another ball object. Oh, so this. Right. This velocity. O3 equals this velocity. This velocity equals the object's velocity that's passed in. And then the object's velocity is set to the velocity that we've stored from there. Okay. God, that was very mixed up. That would have made no sense when you saw it. Okay, so yeah, the balls are all starting on top of each other, which is a bit of a problem. So we need to kind of randomize them. It'll be interesting to see what happens when it gets to the edge. That's quite good. It's not disappearing into the edge. So we're okay. Okay, we kind of need to randomize where the balls are to begin with. So uh, ball, that's going to be in ball. Yes, this velocity. Oh, no. Um, yeah, we want to put its x and y wants to be randomized so we can do that aha in the another advantage of arrays we can just do that once so we don't want it in the center we want the center minus um oh god how far is it how long are these edges so that's a top edge it is three quarters of the width length so we want to do it at at the most half that so Let's say, oh, we can almost say, actually, let's just refer to the top edge, its width divide, uh, times, and we'll say three quarters of that, or that number, 75. Okay. Uh, oh, uh, plus or minus, sorry. From the center, plus or minus this amount. Actually, it's that amount divided by 2. This whole amount divided by 2. So it wants to be... Oh, God. It's going to be a random amount. So this width plus a random amount. Oh, actually, I'm going to use P5s random. We're not looking for speed here, so we're okay. So it can be that by the maximum, oh, it's minimum that, minus that amount in the minus direction, or that amount in the positive direction. And then for y, height divided by 2. So now we want to do a very similar thing, but in terms of the top the in terms of um, the say the left or the right edges heights <laughs> let's just say left edge hid times 75 divided by 2 hid sorry I haven't explained this at all really as I'm going along I've tried to that's kind of interrupted my thinking. Okay, 
I give up. That's about <laughs> about what I think it should be. Random isn't going the right colour, I think. I think I've done something wrong. Oh no, I think I'm using that random wrong. It might just be I haven't got enough uh, brackets in there now. Line 26. Line 26. <laughs> oh, look at this. It's disgusting. Right, so this... Oh, yeah. Oh, God, I don't even know where it begins and ends. There, is it? Yeah, because we're only doing one. Okay. It might be that. That might be enough. Oh no. <laughs> okay, everything's working, but I think I'm just placing them in a stupid position. Oh, let's right, let's uh let's delete that nonsense and just put random um minus two hundred to two hundred for the x direction, sorry, the x position of our new ball, and we'll say minus 100, 100. Okay. Oh no, that's going to be <sighs> on the screen. So we want to say the width divided by 2 minus that. And this wants to be a height divided by 2 minus that. at least have some balls somewhere on the screen. No, no, no. Oh. I don't know what I've just done. I've hidden my face. <laughs> oh, now I've closed it down. Right, let's have a look. New ball, width divided by 2, minus a random number, height divided by 2, Oh, that should be plus. That should be plus. And now I've got the right amount of brackets. Okay. I'm fairly confident this will work. This one. I'm like, okay. I was going to say about 82%. So there's no... Oh, there is a bug. That's kind of good. 65 now. What's going on there? Cannot read property copy of undefined. Check collider 65. That's strange because I'm sure I hadn't changed anything since we got this working last time. 65. Oh, let distance equal... I'm not sure what's going right here. Cannot really copy. So that's bizarre. That's going wrong ever since I changed this. So I've got a I've got a, an X, I've got a Y. Ah, that shouldn't be there. Yes it should. That should be there. Okay. So what was happening there? Uh writing this kind of ugly code, instead of working out these these amounts separately in nice and tidy variables outside of the for loop. I'm trying to do all the working out inside of uh, uh, where parameters need to go and ending up with just sloppy, needless bugs about that involve brackets and positionings of brackets and things like that that haven't any anything to do with like game logic or anything. So that's a tip. Don't. <laughs> Don't try and cram in all your calculations in, in parameters. 
do all the calculation cleanly and logically somewhere else and then pass them in. I say that with confidence in my voice. <laughs> Will it work? Here we go. Yes, yeah, so we've got some balls in random positions. And now this is like a gift from the gods. The, the collision detection is working quite nicely. It only goes wrong when we've got balls kind of being instantiated in our universe here on top of each other. So it's like Pauli's exclusion principle. We can't have two physical objects in exactly the same place. I'm really pleased. I've never written collision detection. What have I done? I've somehow stumbled upon the right answer. That was a complete accident. There's no cleverness involved. So in this clever, this is a clever little function that I accidentally wrote. I've basically said, just swap their two objects together. If you want collision detection, swap their velocities, velocity vectors, and, and velocity is a vector, and you get perfect collision detection, as long as the objects haven't been instantiated on top of one another. So in terms of our game design, what we want to do is introduce one one ball at a time. Okay, so I think I won't redo this video, although there's a lot of me working things out. I'm going to keep that in because it might be help, helpful to you, and we at least get to see this kind of bug happening. Oh, it is eating into the edge there. Anyway, this has been now way more than 15 minutes. Sorry about that, but we have got loads of collision going on. So next one, we're going to have, we might write the mechanism for introducing or dropping in a ball at a time, get the pockets. And then the last thing we need to do is maybe get hitting our, our balls. And then we've got the main mechanic, all the main mechanics worked out. And you can add scoring and player one, player two, player three, player four. And all of that will be, be going, adding loads of balls, changing the size of them. OK, so it's just pockets and kind of hitting the, the balls. OK. Um, <laughs> I need to stop the video at some point. Sorry about the length. I um, hope something was useful there. Goodbye.